Hello and welcome. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete. And it's been a lovely week. I hope it has been for you. We've had lots of lovely sunshine. Today is no different. The sun is pouring in through the window here. And uh, it's lovely. A little bit misty in the distance. Uh, and chilly. I think it's about five degrees out there. But with the sun, you know, it makes makes all the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> my friend came round to see me this week. I said I've got a few things on my mind. Okay, what was that she said? And patiently listened. And it was a joy. She put me right. No, that's good there and that's good there. Because sometimes, I don't know about you, but when we just think about it ourselves and it goes round and round in our heads, we can get the wrong view of it. I mean, mine was about a quilt I'm making. This week, I've, well, I think last time I told you I sent off for some fabric and it came. And I have filmed me making this quilt. And it's a bit of a story. So when I finish the quilt, I'm going to show you the quilt. And well, let's say I've been working on it quite quite well this week. I I've cut it out, I've sewn it together, and I'm halfway through quilting it. So I'm quilting by hand because my granddaughter said, oh, Nan, it's so special when you make the things. You know, I've got my baby quilt and my growing up quilt and this and that quilt, and she's got a double bed quilt, and, you know, she just loves them, as do all the family, I think I've said. So I'm quilting this for Tommy. One's coming for George as well, and George's one is pieced. But I haven't started quilting that one yet. So, yeah, I'm doing quite well. That's what I've been doing this week. So why did I tell you that? Oh, because Heather came round and I wasn't quite sure which one. I'd, I'd made one for Tommy and I'd made one for George. But was I choosing the right one for the right boy? Oh, yes, she said. And what she said made total sense. So, yeah, I've got that sorted out. If you're new here... Chinwag's just a general chat about family life, about my crafting. Can you see a pile here I've got? A couple of weeks ago, well, I've been having a good sort out. I had my bedroom decorated and my bedroom is my craft room. It's, well, it's my crafty space. I've got a table which the, which the uh, camera's on. I've got little shelves here and I've got some cupboards over there. They did house my jumpers and things like that, but I really downsized my wardrobe, my clothes, and so I found myself with a crafting cupboard for all my uh, paper crafting, uh, of which I have done none, absolutely none, since Pete became poorly. If you don't know, my husband Pete, he became poorly last November, uh, but he's on the mend. In fact, he frightened me this morning. Well, not frightened me, but oof. when you're caring for someone, you probably know you know, he came out of hospital, he didn't know where he was. He doesn't remember being in that last hospital, except that it was traumatic for him because it was so awful. And now, you know, things are starting to work and he, oh, well, he's doing so well, so well. But hang on a minute, I'm just we're going out for short walks and yes, he's he's back to cooking lunch and well, he cooked me breakfast this morning, scrambled egg on toast. Anybody's had peach scrambled egg? It's gorgeous, soft and fluffy. And he cleared up. Wow. You see, so I was saying a couple of weeks ago, oh, my goodness, I'm not coping with the saucepans. And now he's clearing up too. I can't moan. So I got up this morning and he said, um, I'm going in the garden today. Oh, he's been itching to get in that garden. I'm going in the garden today. Oh, I said, oh, are you? What are you going to do? He said, mow, mow a part of the lawn. We keep a part of the lawn for wildlife. You know, we keep the grass long and all of that. And he just wants to go round that longer grass. I mean, it's not long grass yet. It's only the beginning of March. But he wants to mow it. Oh, and I did feel, I did feel anxious. He said, what? Why are you? Why are you looking like that? I thought, oh, you know. Good, good. You can see what I'm doing. Oh, so anyway, I've said, well, while I'm doing chinwag, would you do the roses? Because we've got these hedge roses 
and you have to either prune them in February or November. Well, of course, in November, they didn't get done. And now we're at the beginning of March. So I said, would you do the roses? So yes, he's out there doing the roses. It's not like pushing a mower, is it? Well, he's got this spirit that you can't hold back. You just can't, which is, which is wonderful. So that's where we are about Pete. Can you keep up? I say that to my friend Heather. Keeping up, of course she can keep up. She keeps up brilliantly, so I hope you can too. Anyway, where was I? So I wanted to show you what I was wearing last week, and it's in this um, Nectar by Kim Hargreaves. I mean, it's, it's ages old, 2008. <laughs> can you still get it? I don't know, but... Um, Oh no, this is what I'm wearing today, 2008. I, oh, I love this. It's made from Kid Silk Haze. It, and look, 2008 I made it. It's got, shall I stand up? It's got a little um, frill around the bottom. Can you see? A little frill there. And then the sleeves are a, a little bit frilly like that. It's just so comfortable, so warm, so light, so comfortable. I love it. Uh, anyway, that's the pattern. Um, cardigan with flounce edgings called Tender. And you can see the little flounce there. There's the line and the flounce. And Kid Silk Hays. Uh, so that's a super pattern to... I hope you can still get it. Uh, what's it called? Tender. You knit it in two and three quarter uh, millimeter for the, you know, the start of it. And then three and a quarter for the main body. You need, uh, for me, I needed five 25 gram balls. Really easy. The, the sleeves fit in nicely. So what? I mean, it is like, it's like a cobweb, but so, so warm. I've worn it and worn it and worn it. And here it still is. Anyway, that's what I'm wearing this week from the book Nectar. What I was wearing last week, I was asked, what was that? And that was from the Rowan book, number 45. And uh, Do we know the, the year? I'm not sure. They don't tend to... Oh, 2009. So this was the year after. So that's uh, Rowan. You probably can still get the pattern if you really fancied it. I love it. And this is it. Well, I had it on last week. I love the little roll of the... Well, it's not ribbing. It's just a few rows, but it rolls round. And then the bottom is lovely. It goes up. I might knit it again. I came across this one as well, and I knitted this for Pete. And looking at the pattern, there is a... Um, I knitted it, and it looked gorgeous on him. I really fancy... Oh, he's walking up the garden. Don't look. Um, it says here, valid with this coupon until 1979. So probably I knit this in about 78. And, oh, it did look lovely on him. And I'd love to do it again. I might do. And I might do it in Jameson and Smith's. It's double knitting. Um, so, yeah, this is it. Can you see? Oh, it was. I did it in those colours too. I don't think that's dated, do you? I don't think that's dated at all. In fact, I think it's quite before its time. It's a Montrico uh, pattern, and I think they were before their time. Well, there it is on the front. That could be now, couldn't it? But there it was. Uh, what do we call that? Well, maybe we do call it vintage, but I just call it mine. So there we are. So that's what I was wearing last week and what I'm wearing this week. So I'd better get on. So I'll show you my pile, shall I? Shall I? Because this pile was put on the spare bed. My spare bed, as I worked round and I tidied everywhere up 
and I put everything in one place and I'm going to work through that and it's going to get done. And a lot of it is only very small stuff. Do you just put things off sometimes? I do. But no, this is what I'm working through. First thing, I did a video and showed you how I cut the hoods off. Oh, um, oops, oops. I'm not keen on hoods. I'm not keen on hoods on, knit, on knitted stuff. I always find they're much too big for the garment. And it, it proved to be, I, I wore it with the hood, but it's very nice. I mean, it's shaped at the back. It's a very nice pattern shaped at the back oh no yes that's right it's longer at the front than it is at the back and it's got that cable very very nice and i just cut the hood off do you remember i did it in a pink one for a pink one too and i did the pink one the pick the stitches up what do i knit what how, what am i knitting you know six rows i pick the a stitches straight up on the pink one and put this one down probably because well, I prefer the pink one. But do you know what? I'm going, oh, yeah, you go out walking. This is lovely. So that is on my going to get done. And I shall tell you when I've done it. Tick it off the list. It's not a written list. It's a on the spare room bed list. So there it is. That's what I'm doing. What would that take me? Hour and a half? Tops. I didn't think it was fair of myself. To put this on the spare bed, if you've seen my previous episodes, you've seen that I've made um, some quilt as you go, five inch blocks, and I've put it on one of these and it looks lovely. It's on the coffee table and I just love it. It's a reminder of a time for me and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do some more and I've got a smaller one. So I want to do, you know, a slow stitched. I know what I'm doing with this. I know exactly what I'm doing in my head they're both in my head but it doesn't really have to be put on the spare room bed does it because i haven't started it yet i think i'll be doing these for the rest of my life so i'm just going to put these on this table because that's where they'll go and then when i'm ready to do them i'll do them so so far i've just got that jacket my daughter bought me this kit and it's um happy post it says and it's from the stitchery and if you've seen my logo, um, she gave me that kit too. And I put Chinwag. I think it's The Green Door by Nikki Franklin. And she gave me that and I did it. And I thought, that's a nice logo. So she's bought me another kit. And it's a postcard, a postcard from England. And so when you've done it, beaut oh, it's lovely beautiful piece of linen all here with just the little houses outlined and I can't wait I absolutely can't wait you get all the threads and you get the postcard to put it on here's the postcard lovely piece of art paper that's going to be the size of it so that's a kit I can't wait to start it but I haven't had the not wherewithal, but the, oh, it's all beautifully packed in pink, pink t tissue. I haven't had the, yeah, space in my head, shall we say it like that, to start it. But I will have. And, um, yeah, that's on the spare room bed. But it's not like one of those things that I should have done. Should or must, I don't use those words, could have done. I could have done that. When, but maybe something happened and I got excited about something else, taking that hood off and doing that. And when you've done one, you can't be bothered to do another one. So that's on my to-do list, but this is on my all oh, can't wait to-do list. I've got another kit I sent off for. It's called the Sweet Sewing Box. And it is a sweet sewing box. Can you see that? I just thought it'd be nice. It, I think you can put um, sewing, yeah, sewing stuff in. Let's take it out. Everything's in this kit and it's from um, Rose Garden Patchwork. As you know, I love her stuff. I get my macaron supplies from her. And let's see if there's a pattern of what inside is like. She shows you how to make it. Oh, yes. Here we go. 
she show, gives you pictures, everything. Very, very detailed. And inside, we've got some little compartments to keep, you know, needles and and threads. And so I thought it would be nice. I thought I'd have a bash at making this one. It wasn't expensive, but I haven't, I haven't started it. So I think this is going to go on the pile of, oh, I can't wait, but I haven't had the opportunity. Okay, that's quite exciting, isn't it? Right, what's next? Okay, let's take this out. This is something I've started. Ah, oh, here we go. I'm doing the um, two and a half inch squares to go on the spool that I just showed you. And I started doing um, hollyhocks because I was doing the flowers. That won't take me long. I could finish that. But again, it's all part of my long-term stitching for the spools. What pile would that go on? I think that would go on um, something that goes on forever, a current thing, not something to start new, not something I should get done. I want to get done and get, get it out the way. So this is going on the, oh, when I want to pick it up, I know it's always there. So I've got three piles so far. Now this I showed you is my quilt. And I have been doing a bit of embroidery on it. Uh, in fact, I've been been doing quite well. I, I concentrated on one circle. What was the circle? I'll see if I can show you. But again. Oh, here we are. This is what the one I concentrated on. Again, it's got six circles on it. I'm not embroidering the... Um, English paper pieced bits. I made up the pattern. It's not, it's not, um, I just put it together. And so I've been working on that. Can you see I've done the bird? A bit more on the flowers there. What else? Oh, I've done the stems. Yes, I've done quite a bit. So again, this is something I want to work on when I, I'm in the mood. When I'm in the mood, an ongoing thing. Right, that's on the ongoing pile. Okay, definitely. All right, now this is on my, I want to get it finished pile. And we have to ask ourselves, oh, I do, I ask myself, why didn't I just finish it? I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty good at doing something and then finishing it it doesn't usually languish if it does languish it's because i came across a problem and the problem this is in my chinwork bag um the problem i came across honestly i can finish knitting this this week if i put my mind to it which i think i might once i finish thomas quilt because i started with thomas for the first one just happened it was Thomas, um, but yeah, I want to get this done. It's the, I've forgotten what the pattern is because I've got it on my um, MacBook, you know. Oh, but you see, I've only got this much wool left and I don't want to buy any more because, well, like, because I don't. And because I've got this much left of the, you know, contrast. So I wanted to work out a pattern that I could finish the jumper by using both wools. And I've, I've worked out what I'm going to do. It means I'm doing the cuff because I've done all this. It's all done. I've done the sleeve. Here's the sleeve. Let's get it out. Here it is. It fits lovely. It looks beautiful. I've done the sleeve, but I've got this le length left to do of the other sleeve. And then a bit, a mm, couple of inches round and round on the bottom. Not too long. But you see, I didn't want to just do the rib in this. I, no. So what I've decided to do is undo this little bit of ribbing here 
and do one of those, you know, column ribs. So I'll use this and this in a column and then do that on the other sleeve, obviously, and do that for the bottom. And then that way, I think I'll have enough wool left without me buying any more of this. So I'm back on track. I could have done it, but I just, mm, I thought I've got to, I've got to think about this. <gasps> He's mowing. He's mowing that lawn. He's a cheeky monkey. He was determined. He's got it all plugged in. Don't go over the wire. No, he's doing it. He's all dressed up in his garden gear. So there we are. That's going on my original first pile. Pile one. I'm going to get that done. So that jacket's going to get done. And that, cut, that jumper's going to get done. The other pile is things I can't wait to start and the other pile is ongoing, things I can just pick up, do a little bit and put down because there's absolutely no rush. Now, things have moved on a bit because, oopsie, I'm dropping everything. I bought this, honestly, I can't tell you when, Creative Silk Pack, green, yellow and teal shades. Look at it. Oh all manner of stuff in there and now i'm doing these spools and this different type of stuff oh you know you can just use this and sew a little bit down and so what i want to do uh peter and i we went on a day course don't you fall down let me just pick that up we went on a day course and we made these i've shown you before but if you're new pete made he loves trees pete made the wood and i made the sea with the little lighthouse our view from tresco but now i want to embellish it and put some more of this on maybe a few i've seen you know it's all on youtube now isn't it maybe a few little um shells not too much a little white, little green, stab it in, sew it on, just to do a bit of embellishment. It's quite a procedure to do this. It really is. It took us a whole day. You lay your strips of wool out. I did show you on one of the episodes. You lay all your strips of wool out and then you have to bash it and wash it and felt it all. Anyway, I'm pleased with it, but I want to do some more embellishments. What should we put? What pile? It hasn't got to be done. Um, it's not a kit that's waiting. It's one of those that, uh, oh, just when I'm in the mood, I'm going to pick it up and sort it. Good. Now, these are my two dresses that I showed you on the vintage or retro pile. And I know what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to cut out the fronts because it's this bit that I love and I'm going to, there's two there. I mean, the sleeve's been cut off for quilting. So I'm just going to cut that front bit out and I'm going to make a um, project bag probably with the, with the two. So that is, well, that's something I'd like to get done. So I'm going to put that on my get done pile. All right. Now, I made these in the 70s and um, here they are, Holly, Holly Hobby. She was quite a thing. They were framed. Should I reframe them? I've got two. There's one. Oh, here's the other one. I haven't got room on the walls. Oh, I love that one. Absolutely love it. So I don't want it languishing again. So that is going to go on the pile to sort out with, oh, it's lovely. Can you see it there up close? Yes, I embroidered Holly Hobby. But why didn't I put my name on it? Why didn't I put the year I did it? 70s, early 70s. Oh, and well, about 76, I think. I'm either going to 
make that into a project bag or I'm going to I'm going to put it on the I need to sort it pile right we've got that on the I need to sort it definitely and these little bits here you see I made what did I make here oh I did um some you know that could be met used bag couldn't it or it could go round the spool one of the spools so that's going to go on to I need to use it need to make it into and quilt it put it on the spool this again I was just playing about doing a little bit of you know log cabin that will go on to I need to sort that I'm not leaving anything in cupboards my cupboards are clear oh isn't this cute I bought this at uh, Ali Pali I think so again need to use it need to use it need to use it so that's going on that first pile the need to use it pile right going to be done oh here's another one here's another log cabin so i can do that now this was a quilt i made for my granddaughter who um who's got george and mila and i made this for her when she was a little girl just you know obviously the the strips along the along the edge i can't part with it so i might i might make a little bag or something up with that for mila because that would be her mummy's quilt fabric so that's going on the pile to do i'm going to get all these little jobs done and out the way here's another one oh here's a stitch and twist now i've made a stitch and twist quilt for tommy and um, i'll show you how i do it and you probably know but if you don't know well you might like to see um so i filmed it but that's what it looks like i was just seeing what that would do again that would make a project bag wouldn't it so that's going on the pile of things to get done another little put them all together pile of things to get done now here's a stitch and twist when it's really small i made a stitch and twist quilt for a friend's son wedding present and i did it in that but i decided you needed plain this was much much too busy although when you quilted it it didn't look too bad but that's the stitch and twist. You can do all different sizes and that's the smallest size. Again, that can be used, can't it? Coffee thing. Oh, English paper piecing. And I fussy cut all round to make a kaleidoscope. Liberty prints. Come on, I need to think of something to make a, you know, finish it, finish it. That's going on the finish to finish pile. Oh, I made a bigger one, look. Been in a cupboard. It's a lot of work. Still got the papers in, in the back. All by hand. Thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Need to sew it onto a square and make that into a project bag. What I need is a free couple of days to get that pile done. That's all I need. A free couple of days. Haven't had one for months. But I will do. This is definitely get it on the pile and get it done. Before lockdown, I started this jumper and I loved it. But again, something put me off. There's always something, isn't there? And um, it's called Macintosh Rose Jacket. It's a Bolero style jacket with three quarter sleeves and it's knitted in Rowan Fine Tweed, which is a beautiful wool. It's lightly frilled lacy edging and that's what I don't like the light lightly frilled lacy edging it's too heavy for me that edging too heavy but I love I love the pattern well I did it is from this book Scottish Heritage Knits by Martin Story 
As I say, I started it before lockdown. I got on very well with it. Here's the wall. Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal. That's what I did it in. It's beautiful. It's got all these lovely colours in it. I don't know if she makes it now, but it's the same as Fine Tweed. It's come up lovely. So I did it in that pink, which is a real... It's a, a purpley pink. He's done what he wanted to do out there. Oh, he's a boy. What a spirit, eh? And I did it in this blue. It's all got little dark bits of blue and light bits of blue in. Looks a bit grey on there, doesn't it? But it is... These two, they're, they're like ice cream. And um, look, I've done the back. I've done the back. The sides. Sleeve. Sides are all done. And the other side. That's here. Can you see the pattern? It's very, very subtle. Very pretty. And what stopped me was I did all the edging. Here we go. It's all done. Don't like it. It's much too heavy for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the sleeve. I've got the other sleeve started. Haven't got it here, but I have got it started. I think. But I'm going to finish the other sleeve. It, it deserves it, doesn't it? It's nice. It'll be double inside. Can you see that? Pattern. Very subtle. I think it will just look lovely. So what I need to do is finish it. And then my friend is coming, who's very, very good at crochet. Although I might, saying that, talking about it with you, I might just do that edge that I showed you that I had on last week, that little rolled edge. I think that would be lovely. I'm going to just do the little rolled edge. Sorted. I can get on with that now. So, well, I'm going to put in a piece here. This is going to be a long one this week. I probably won't see you for a couple of weeks. Uh, well, let's can't say that who knows but um pete and i are doing desert island discs <laughs> i know i just thought it'd be nice for him to come on and say hello and um yeah so we're doing desert island discs if you don't know in england since 1942 um the program started and the person on the program could have eight records uh, that meant something to them and um, Roy Plumley or whoever the um, interviewer was asked about their life around that record. You could take a book and you could take a, um, a treasured item, something you really wanted. Uh, yeah, a special, something special. It couldn't help you escape from the island though. Lots of people took pianos. That was fine. Um... Pete's thinking about what he's going to take. First of all, immediately he said you, but he can't take me um, because I, yeah, I don't want to go and live on a desert island and anyway, I'm not going. So it's got to be something he's got to think about. Um, you're given the complete works of Shakespeare and the Bible and then you can take any book you want. Straight away, he knew what book. When we talk about that, you know, I won't tell you what he said. He didn't tell us this week. We'll do that at the end. But you can take eight records. So yesterday, we just recorded record one. And I put that in here. Record one. What's what's your choice of record one? Uh, what was it? It was da -da, Long Tom Sally. Right. And... Trudy Fruity. Trudy Fruity, old it. Rudy. That's yeah, the, Little Richard, is it? Little Richard. Long Tall Sally was the um, main one. Right. And Trudy Fruity was the B side, if you like. That's what they called it, wasn't it then? And what year was this? Oh, 1950 something. 1957? Yeah, 57. Okay. 57. And how old were you? In 57? Yeah. 45, 55, uh, 10, 12. 12. That's it. So there you are, buying a record at 12. Little Richard, 
Yeah. Long Tall Sally, yeah. Tutti Fruity. That's, it. That's quite an amazing record. Oh, what was. was going on in your house? Were, was those sorts of records being no, played? No, no, no. No? Mom, no. My brother, who was about 12 years older than me. Yeah. So in, he was 25. He was into like musicals okay. and he also liked Sinatra. Easy listening? Easy. Well, that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Age 25, that's what he'd be into. But here are you, age 12. Yeah. Little Richard. And he gave me my, um, gave me the money to go and get it because he used to give me a um, pocket money every week. Oh. Because he worked. Okay. Well, I've actually... My mum gave me pocket money, and so did my dad. So you, you and were... my brother. So I, I was, you know, I had a few. So, but that's the one I would take because it's the first one, yeah. uh, and it was one of the first rock and roll. You know, it's also new, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was new. I mean, I, I read about that record mm. that uh, Little Richard was working in a a restaurant, and he was washing pots. Oh right, yeah. And the guy kept coming in with more pots, more pots, more yeah. pots. And he just thought, I've got to do something. And he wrote the songs and he, he made himself a nuisance, really, to get them published, as you would, I think, that, you know, a lot of people did yeah, that, didn't fun, they? Yeah. But when people used to say to Little Richard, how are you? You know, he, do you know what he used to say? Wham, bam, loo, bam, bam. Oh, he did. Yeah. Wham, bam, loo, bam, 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 bam. And, for, and that's what he used to say. So he wrote this down in the... Um, you know, in the restaurant where he was working. And, of course, that started his career, didn't it? Yeah. And also your love well, of music in the sense that's of... A, yeah, the new music. The new like. music, yeah. I think it had been going a lot longer in, in America. And anybody that knows Pete knows that he would have 24 music, 24-hour music playing. And what you do, I don't know if you do, if you know you do it, but if we, <laughs> if we're, say, chatting about something or I might mention something, up will come a little line from a song oh. that exactly fits. And so I know how you're feeling during the day because of these mm. little snippets of songs that you say. Oh. Amazing, isn't it? I so they're all I can't in there. Think of no, they're all, you did it yesterday. Did I? Yeah. But you're all, uh, they're all in there, all these, this music. So getting back to your record one, where did you buy it? Elmar's Music Shop. Or music or something. And where was that? Potter's Bar. You bought a 78? So the uh, 45s were coming in then. Yes. I think I bought two altogether. And I can't think what the other one was. There's a bit oh. of story behind that because at the time I was in the Scouts. Mm -hmm. And I bought it because this chap kept pestering me. And we was at, uh, the Scouts were having a bit of a do. Right. And he was in charge of the music. Oh, and he okay. ran up. Oh, great. And he played it for the rest of the day. Oh. And by the time I got it, it worn out more or less. Wow. I, I didn't worry because I didn't like it that much. He'd asked me to get it. Yeah. No, it was all sort of all right. But yeah, it wasn't, it, wasn't, yours. it wasn't quite up my street. Well, Long Tall Sally, it was the, the one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. That was the main That's, That was the main one, yeah. 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 Did you have a television? We got a television yeah. when uh, you could rent them, radio rentals. Oh, okay. And uh, So you didn't buy your television? No, rentals. you paid it. And then any money over... Yeah. You so get, if it ran out, that was it like the electric? Oh, yeah, ran, you had to go and oh, feed it. You had to go oh, and feed okay. it half a crown a go or something. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but if you got went over, you got that money back at the end of the month. Or you could keep it in and they'd give it to you at Christmas. So oh, It was right. quite good, you know, in a way. Something your mum would like. Yeah, just all yeah. black and white still. Not building it? up bills and that, how much no, electric am I spending? No, she loved doing that. If she could get yeah. it you know, weekly yeah. or something, she would. And it, it worked. 1957 yeah. was a bit of a record year because they allowed television between 6 and 7 p.m. That was the new rule. I'm not sure. Hang on, sorry. I'm not sure if we did. We might have had a telly then. Okay. I, can't quite, I was never in, really. Age 12, you were never in? Never in. I was either at the, like the Scouts thing or I was out with my mates. Or, yeah. Um. Well, you know, I've spent when we were, dis when we were discussing this, yeah. whether to do Desert Island this, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, ask you, yeah. because that's what people say, what would you tell your younger self? 
you know, it's a question people say to you, isn't it? Well, nothing. and that's what your answer was. Nothing. Nothing. I had a great time. Yeah, I had a great time. Yeah. 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 Carry on, boy. <laughs> that's what I was saying. Carry on, Carry boy. Carry on, boy. You were out. You're you were with right. your mates. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to tell you about the telly. And they said in the 50s, the hours people watched television were tightly controlled. The 24-hour broadcasting of today was unheard of. The Postmaster General stipulated how many hours of television could be shown each week. In 1956, for example, the BBC was allowed to broadcast television on weekdays between 9am and 11pm mm. with not more than two hours before 1 p.m. So in other words, two hours in the morning. Yeah. There was also a period between 6 and 7 p.m. when no television was broadcast. Yeah, this yeah, period was it. used by parents to trick young children into thinking that the evening's television had finished so they would go to bed without complaint. <laughs> it was known as the toddler's truce. Wouldn't happen today, would it? You no. couldn't trick a toddler that there was no TV. It'd no, just get his on. iPad, wouldn't it? <laughs> At the weekends, the rules were no more relaxed. A maximum of eight hours broadcasting was allowed on Saturdays and seven and three quarters on Sunday. And television shows between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. was intended for adults. Mm. Children were meant to be at Sunday school. And gradually, the rules on broadcasting hours were made... Sunday school? Yeah. Gradually, the rules on broadcasting hours were made less strict. The toddler's truce, for example, was dropped in 1957. Don't you remember, when we think about it, Sunday afternoons? Hancock even did a whole thing on it. Uh -oh. Sunday after... I mean, no shops open. Nothing. No television. Nothing was open. Sunday afternoon. It just dragged, unless you... We're out with your mates, which was, you were yeah. always out with your mates. So it didn't really touch you. Well, it's, but, it's I mean, boring. It is, it is, it's a funny. Yeah, there's nowhere you could go. No, it, it uh, was quite a famous thing, Sunday afternoon, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The other thing about 57 that I found out in the book that I used to look through with mum, and it does say here, a Feb March, fine sets these Fergusons. The television revolution gains momentum as everyone joins in. Mm. And there's a picture of an old lady with a cup of tea and a cat on her lap. So obviously TV was really starting to, starting to yeah. take off, wasn't it? Yeah, we yeah. did have a television then. You did, We had a yeah. radio Yeah. I like this unspoilt Benidorm. The people are charming, not yet spoilt by easy money, wrote one travel writer, today of a village called Benidorm <laughs> on Spain's Costa del Sol. Those poor people. Yeah, yeah. New hotels are going up everywhere. They're mostly cool, spick and span, well-fitted and flimsy with masses of private bathrooms, though in some places only salt water comes out the taps. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. Flimsy. Mm. Yeah, we've had a recap. We've gone done your first record. Do you think the next seven are going to take that long? We, no, I, don't I think, think so. we'll have to speed up. Once so we? there we are. That was a bit of fun. I just wanted to talk to you about how good crafting is for us. I did say a few weeks ago that I had a low day. Yeah, it was because, you know, I was tired. There's lots of reason we can feel low, isn't there? I mean, if we're feeling depressed or if we're feeling, you know, there's a chemical imbalance, we need to see the doctor. We need, you know, that's a different thing to having a day when you feel a bit low. I know why I was feeling a bit low. One, I was tired. Two, I've been through it in the past few weeks. And uh, we were developing this sort of... I don't know, I'm not very good with the days being the same. And the days were being the same. Uh, we were keeping ourselves away from people. One, because Pete had the flu, first of all. He came home with that. And uh, two, he wasn't strong enough to see people. And three, we didn't really want to see people because a lot of people around here have had this horrible flu or bad cold. So we were sort of not isolating ourselves, but, you know, that's how we were. And... Um, I just felt flat on that Monday 
and and you know i've had some people say what can you do if you feel flat you know what is it what is it that can make you feel flat there's a french word for meaning heart and it's cur isn't it cur that's the french for heart and we get that word encouragement, don't we? In the middle, cur, encouragement. And maybe when we're feeling low, we just need a bit of encouragement from friends. Friends that know us, where we can really talk about how we're feeling and, you know, who can comfort us even. Maybe they might encourage us by saying, doing some crafting with us. Maybe they might, well, I don't know, come out for a meal as my friend Heather did. She came out for a meal. My other friend popped down from London and we had a laugh and, and and it's a bit of comfort there too. So that's what we need. That's what I need when I'm feeling low. And I it got me to looking up how good crafting is for you. And what crafting can do, knitting, crochet, cross stitch. In the article that I was looking at, it says that when we do those things, we're using two hands. And when we use two hands, let me see what it says. Both knitting, crochet, cross stitch. It's similar to that of playing the piano. Both activities require you to use both hands to make different moves. And this simultaneously and coordinated movement stimulates both sides of our brain. Knitting also holds similar benefits to doing complex crosswords or Sudoku. Regular practice improves concentration, pattern recognition and memory. And also I saw, oh yes, it lowers blood pressure. It slows the onset of dementia and helps to reduce, reduce depression. Top tips to improve your mood. Talk to someone about how you're feeling. That's what I was saying. Talk to someone who understands, who can put the heart back into you, who can give you some comfort and encouragement. Music and singing is great. I'm not a great one for listening to music at all, but singing, I mean, even if it's just, you know, we all talk about singing in the shower, don't we? Singing round in the house. Yeah, it's nothing better. It really does. It doesn't have to be in tune. It really does boost the mood. There's nothing like a good sing-along, is there? Activity going for the short walks, even if it's not a long one that you can manage getting out in the fresh air and a good sleep, a good sleep. Now, after a period of stress, which I've had, it's been quite a long period of stress, our neurotransmitters <laughs> can be out of kilter. They send, the, they send the message to there, but it goes actually to there, you know, it's all out of balance. We can get things wrong and there may still be background stress that's straining us. It's draining us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we need to get these neurotransmitters realigned and crafting and singing, walking and a good sleep all helps to realign our neurotransmitters. So crafting, it said, is beneficial for mental health because it reduces stress and anxiety, it enhances creativity, problem solving abilities and self-expression. Isn't that true? Even if we buy a kit, we always put our bit of on it, don't we? We always change it a little bit. Well, mostly we do. It's us. Every kit will look different. So this self-expression and I did come across a massive problem when I was making Tommy's quilt. You'll see it on when I show you the uh, video of how I made it. Oh, no. Mm, how do I get over this one? And I did. So therefore, crafting's very good for the problem solving. For self-expression. For creativity. It improves cognitive functioning focus, problem solving and memory. I mean, 
You can't beat that, can you? Just because you're sitting doing a bit of knitting, crochet, embroidery, slow stitching, uh, you know, cross stitch. So it promotes good mood and productivity. That's why we're so anxious to get to our crafting. We can't wait, can we? Because we know we're going to feel better after we've done it. It increases dopamine and serotonin. And those two things give us feelings of pleasure. It helps people, it said, get into a state of flow which is a mental state of being fully immersed in an activity. You forget what's going on around you. And so therefore that relaxes the mind and it reduces stress. Promotes relaxation. As I say, promotes the, stimulates the release of these neurotransmitter dopamines. It lowers the levels of cortisol, which actually causes us stress. You know, when you see road rage, their cortisol is going up completely. Um, and so, yeah, it just lowers that. It improves concentration and it provides social connection because we do this together. Even if we're doing it on our own, that's what YouTube's all about, isn't it? We're sharing what we're doing you're joining in me, with me you know you're telling me about what you're making and we're joining and that's that's great for us so what can encourage me when i'm feeling a bit flat seeing friends crafting gives me comfort a good walk if you can't get out because of the rain then uh, you know even yeah just walking around the house pottering about my mum used to potter and uh, she used to feel, and, and she used to sing while she potted as well. And uh, yeah, she was a happy lady. A good meal. Well, for some, that's very important. Something you really enjoy. Sitting down with a good book. Yeah. So if there's no one around to give you a bit of comfort or encouragement, do a bit of self-stroking. Give yourself some encouragement and give yourself some comfort. So that's all my tips, which I was asked for. Tell me what's on your spare bed. Well, I've done that. Can you give us some tips for if we feel low? Because I'm feeling a bit like that. So I, I hope what I've said might help you. So I'm going to love you and leave you now. Well, I'm not going to say I'll see you next week. I'll see you when I see you. That's what I say. You have a good week and take care and look after yourselves. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Thank you ever so much for all those wonderful comments you, you left on Penny's blog. They are really did, really did perk me up. And that's fantastic. Thank you very much.